Now, we're going to get back to some really cool stuff that the basically true arch technology that Humminbird uses. What happens when a fish in our cone angle is going through a steady depth like we talked about? If we're steady depth, that fish is going, and, and our boat is moving, we're going to have boat moving. Boat moving, fish staying at the exact same depth, doesn't move. He's just hanging out there, chilling, whatever he wants to do. He's chilling, he's already fed up. That fish, as we come through, we're going to show it in just a single color here, but that fish is going to create an arc, like we talked about earlier. At this point right here, that arc is going to be red. We're going to start seeing red color. And we're going to see oranges out here, a little bit of orange around that mixed in probably. And then we're going to see some yellow. We may see a little bit of yellow up there. We may see more yellow over here. Start seeing that. And then you'll see this green transition. This is what we call the tails, and that's picking up that weaker sonar signal and telling the unit you want to display it. Sometimes you'll only see a blob. You can just look for the strongest return, and it may just be this intense part of the beam. But this is your tail, and it just tells you that fish is farther out in the cone angle. But now, what happens when Mr. Bass decides that he's not going to stay in the same spot. What happens when Mr. Bass says, I'm down here, man, that sonar ping. I want to go check out what's happening in that noise up there, and he starts doing this, and the boat's moving. At this point, he's farther away at this point, he's closer. We're going to get... We're just going to use one color for representative purposes, but that fish is going to start down here. He enters the cone beam, and he starts moving closer to the boat. Remember we were talking here, he comes up, and he starts coming up. He starts getting closer to the transducer, so that line starts going up. And say he just hangs steady as we finish out going out. That line's going to look like that. Comes in, comes up, and hangs at the same level. Remember, this line's going to taper off because that distance farther, even though he stayed at the same level in the water column. What happens if he mo keeps moving up? A lot of times, you will see this point as a line represented in like that. That fish is going, coming up. Now, if the boat's stationary, and he does that, you're going to see this fish move up. And say, you're going to see that fish move up in that cone beam. He's coming up. That's how, why you won't see an arch in that situation. The fish is moving up. What happens when he moves down? That's our next thing. When a fish moves down. Fish is up here, boat comes over, boom, I'm scared of that boat, that outboard sound's coming over, I'm going deeper, getting away from it. That fish is going to start up here, and he's going to move down. Not creating an arch, he's swimming away, remember. He's getting out of there, he's scared of the old uh, best bass fisherman watching this video right now. He's nervous. That is a fish going moving down, as a downward line because the fish comes in here and it goes down. Now we're going to talk about these phenomenon when the boat is stopped. We've got a transducer here. We're sitting still. Mr. Bass decides he wants to swim through our cone angle and he's going to go down. If you're sitting still, remember the page is constantly refreshing. 
if the fish is going down and we're looking at our graph, this is always our current data. We're going to start over here. That fish is off the screen. When he gets when he gets to here in our sonar and he starts moving down, he's going to start moving like this. Say Mr. Bass, his brother, Billy Bass and Bobby Bass are hanging out. Billy went down, Bobby's coming up. He's going to start doing this. And say another fish decides he wants to swim through this way. Still going to be represented the same. He came in and he came in and swam at the same distance. The distance from the transducer is farther away, so that's going to make him look a little more art shaped. And you'll get fish and you'll see these fish all over the place. Now, back to our strength of return. Those fish came in and were underneath the exact spot of the boat. We're going to show you something here. We're going to go a little deeper here. Now what if these fish, this fish is right underneath the boat. The boat stopped and that fish is staying there. He's staying right under it. It's going to draw a red line all the way across there. But this fish sits out on the outer edge of the cone angle. He's way out here on the edge of the cone angle. That's going to draw a line kind of like this. This one has moved in just a little bit. He's hanging out in this yellow area, but he decides he's going to move up. And then we're going to have one that's in the, oh, two, part way in. He's going to move down. So we start here. He moved down. And now we got Mr. Orange Bass that's hanging just outside of that most intense part of the cone angle. He's going to come way from the bottom, come up, and he's going to come down. That's the spaghetti effect we look for when we're vertical fishing. When you see these fish moving around, the one I want to concentrate is on that one. That one is dead under the cone. This one is either out here or out here. This one, the yellow, is going to be our next, our next color, or green is going to be our next color. It's going to be out here. If I drop the bait, if I drop a bait right down here, and I put me a little hook on here with a little worm, which one's going to be the first one to see it? Bingo. I'm going to want to target that fish there. So I either got to get that fish to come up, or I've got to take the bait down farther. That's just a little bit about 2D sonar. Now I'm going to show you a couple things and I'm going to explain what happens with these fish. Now, what happens if Mr. Bass comes in, hits the sound wave, and does this? He doesn't get in that intense part of the sonar beam, so that arch is going to be farther away in here. He turns in, and he turns out of the sonar beam. He stayed on the outer edge, so he's going to have the blue color, because he's out on the outer edges. He's not in here in the tense part of the sonar beam. He's out on the edge of it, just getting a little bit of sonar uh, return off of him. But he comes in and, and out, he's not going to create an arch. He's just going to create a little bit of a hook. He came in, turn back out. Fish, fish coming this way, this way, this way, any direction in through that sonar beam at the same depth, not going up, not going down, stay at the same depth, that is the only time you'll get a arch. That is how Humminbird uses true arch technology, is that fish has to be at the same depth all the time constant speed of the boat or constant speed of Mr. Fish. If you're not seeing arches, it's not a bad thing. That tells you that fish is moving somewhere or he's not getting, he's not, you didn't travel at a constant speed or Mr. Fish didn't travel at a constant speed. 
True Arts technology gives you exactly what is happening to that fish down there to allow you to make better decisions while you're out there fishing. That fish is sitting out here and he's blue, move the trolling motor, move the boat. You're either going to have to move it right, left, forward, or an angle to pick up Mr. Fish. If he's sitting out here in front and just barely getting a little bit of light on him, you need to move the boat so the fish is dead underneath the sonar reading. The color is going to go from blue to green to yellow to orange to red. When he's dead under that light or that transducer, he's going to light up red. That tells you where the fish is in the cone angle. That's how vertical fishing, you can be more successful by knowing the colors that you're using. To me, the reason I use red is because it jumps out at me real easy. Red is contrast to any of these other colors. So understanding your 2D sonar a little bit better will help you become a better fisherman interpreter of 2D sonar. To me, I always said a 2D sonar is an educated guess. The more educated you are, the better you can guess. So understanding the sonar coverage area and how that strength of return can help you with color sonar is going to make you a better guesser of what's happening down there. The most ultimate sonar is our down imaging and side imaging products or 360 imaging because they don't lie. They tell you exactly what's down there. If a tree branch is sitting in here and a fish is sitting in here at the same height and it's just part way out of here, you're just going to see the tip if you moved across it. If you just come across the tip of the fish and the tip of the branch it's going to look suspended in the water column. A tree underneath is going to be lit up. I mean, it is going to be bright. That sound wave is going to hit off here. For example, you can see my arm is getting lit up, but the end of it's not. That's showing that that tree branch may not show up, the tip of it. The same thing with a fish. If a fish just barely hits the, the, conar the sonar coverage, it's just going to barely show up. So, understanding what the fish, what the sonar can do, will help make you a better fisherman and a better user of sonar. Just because you're not seeing arches doesn't mean the sonar is not working or you're not doing the right thing or the right settings. If you want to see arches better, increase your sensitivity, and you'll start picking up this outer band. get my screen capture back here. Increasing the sensitivity will allow you to start picking up these lighter returns. These blob readings, to me, I don't need all that clutter. I want to see the fish, where it's at, what it's doing, how deep it is, so I can target that fish and find out if it's the species I'm looking for. The thickness of the return will help you determine what size fish it is. If you get a lot of color blobs, those are fish that are really tight together. Like a school of crappie is going to be a whole bunch of red blobs. You may see a school of crappies and you'll see these red blobs all over the place. And you'll see other colors around it. But looking for those red tells you that fish was underneath the center of the cone angle. 2D sonar, understanding it, will help you make a better fisherman out of yourself. Now, there's more, there's like switch fire, max mode, and clear mode, but we're not going to get into that in this segment. What we want you to understand is why fish arch and why fish don't arch. I hope that helped you learn a little bit more about 2D sonar and understanding what the fish is doing down there underneath your transducer. Thank you for tuning in to another set of tips and tricks. And I hope Mr. Plastic Bass and the rigid uh, LED light up there helped you learn a little bit more about uh, how 2D sonar works and how fish arch or why they don't arch. As more importantly, 
Uh, just because they don't arch don't mean that the fish ain't down there. It's just the, so, the Humminbird True Arch technology is telling you exactly what is happening below the water surface to help you make more informed decisions so you can catch more fish and enjoy your time on the water. Thank you for tuning in to another set of tips and tricks and tune in next time as we go more in depth about the products I use and how to get more out of your invest, investment. Thank you and have a great day.